Right. So it's time, and um, I, without wasting my time, I think we, we will need to start. But before then, let me just um, kindly ask that um, it's been recorded. So we are kindly asking the audience to be aware that we are recording the session and it will be shared with you on the website. There are a few basic information I would like us to go through in order to help the session um, go well. And so this is session two. The, we'll be discussing partnerships for managing protracted displacement in West and Central Africa. And we have the interpretation channels. Um, if you scroll down, you would see the interpretation channel function. When you click on the interpretation channel function, you will see English and French. So depending on your language needs, you can, you can either click on the French or the English for you to follow what is going on here. Also, we will be using the Q&A function, which is also down. And it's going to, if you click on more, if, you, if perhaps your, your screen is um, not too light to see it, well, if you click on more, you see the Q&A function. That's what we'll be using when we get to the Q&A section. And so we kindly um, ask our cherished audience to type out their questions while the session is going on. At the appropriate time, I'll read out the questions for our dear speakers to answer them. So thank you very much. This is, um, these, these are just a few things that we need to know before we move on. Right, so at this point, kindly allow me to introduce to you the director of the Center for Migration Studies, who will be giving us a special welcome note. And allow me to just say a few things about him. Professor Joseph Tay, who is a director for the Center for Migration Studies, um, is, has participated in a large number of projects funded by international organizations, including the UKRI, DFID, EU, ACP, IOM, among others. He is currently the co-director, a co-director of the UKRI South-South Migration Inequality and Development Hub. Joseph is a member of various migration management technical and advisory groups. At this point, may I ask Professor Joseph Tay to take the floor? Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. So this is just to briefly welcome you to the session. We already had uh, an exciting session earlier. And in this session, we just want to thank all of you for accepting our invitation uh, to take part in this discussion, which is on protection in West and Central Africa region. Uh, I just wish you all a fruitful discussion. Thank you. You are welcome, Director. Thank you once again. And thank you, cherished audience, for joining us for this session. You are welcome. Relax and enjoy yourself. Let me welcome Mr. Obeche. Mr. Obeche, you are welcome. When I was trying the mic, I couldn't um, hear you. Can you yes. please unmute? Yeah, just yes. to be sure. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank That's you. My you are welcome. Thank you. Okay, so allow me to give a brief um, agenda for this session, just to guide us and know what to expect in the coming minutes. And so I will introduce the, um, the speakers at the appropriate time, rightly after the overview. And the structure of the panel, in order to guide our discussion, I have outlined some questions for the speakers. And I, our speakers are expected to respond to these questions both based on their experiences in their various fields of work. And this will be followed by a Q&A, which I've explained earlier, and a closing remarks. I hope to achieve all these within the stipulated time, so long as I still have your support with me. So thank you very much. And I'll go on with the introduction of the chairpersons. My name is Mary Boatma Setrana. I'm a senior lecturer at the Center for Migration Studies. 
allow me to introduce myself, otherwise I'll not be introduced. Okay, so now I move on to our cherished speakers. Um, our speakers, please, when I mention your name while I'm introducing, I'll be happy if you could use the raise hand function and also turn on your video so that our cherished audience could see you at least so that they could be able to recognize you from here. So I first of all introduce Mr. Osman Adamu Obeche. If I could see the raise hand and the video on, that would be good. Mr. Osman Adamu Obeche joined the ECOWAS Commission in 2007. He is currently the Program Officer for Humanitarian Affairs in the Directorate of Humanitarian and Social Affairs of the ECOWAS Commission, Abuja in Nigeria. His other responsibilities include Desk Officer for the ECOWAS Humanitarian Depot Development and Coordinator ECOWAS Strategy on Civil Military Coordination. You are welcome once again, Mr. Obeche. Can I see the raise hand? If you can just click on the raise hand, just for them to, those who cannot. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. So please, you can turn your video off now. My next on the list is Mr. Patrice Dos, Dosu Ahozo. I hope I mentioned the name right. Please, can I see your face? If you can turn your, <laughs> do you have corrections to me? Yeah, I'm sure I, I pronounced it well, yeah. <laughs> so please, yeah, maybe Thank if you, you can show the, the raise hand function. Mr. Patrice um, Ahozo is also a staff of UNHCR Regional Office Dakar in Senegal. Please, can you show the raise hand function just for audience to know whom I'm talking about? Can you... um, it's down. Yeah. Okay, if you can't see, that's fine. I mean, we can all see you because it's Excellent. only you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So your video can be off now. Now I turn to Mr. Philip Brancha. Brancha is, um, uh, works with IOM Regional Office in Dakar, Senegal. Thank you, I hope I got the name right. Yes, you did, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Right, so let me just, um, a brief introduction. Mr. Philippe joined IOM in 2002. He has been based in Senegal since 2017. He currently serves as IOM Senior Regional Emergency and Post-Crisis Specialist for West and Central Africa. You are welcome once again, Philip Brancha. Yeah. My next on the list is Mr. Tete Paddy. So, Philip, you can now put off your videos while I introduce Mr. Paddy, yes. Mr. Paddy is, uh, is the head of Ghana Refugee Board. He has worked with refugees for close to 13 years and he holds master's degree in migration studies from the Center for Migration Studies, one of our own, University of Ghana. Welcome, Mr. Paddy. Did we see the raise Thank hand, you. please? Yeah, just the raise hand so that others yes. can also see. Yeah, so thank you very much for thank this. You. Thank you. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Now we turn to the main um, session while we are here, and we'll be talking about partnerships for managing protracted displacement in West and Central Africa. And here to guide our discussion and to help us deliberate on the issues very well. As I said earlier, I have some questions. The questions will go around for each of the panelists to answer. And as I said, please, when you are talking, we will need your video on and you unmute yourself. Again, if um, what I will do, just a few instructions just for us to coordinate it well, because it's online. When I give you four minutes, when it's two minutes or one minute, I will show my hand. So I'll show the raise function. And then the second raise function, please pay attention to my function. I beg you. So the second raise function will mean end your submission, please. I don't want to interrupt your flow. So please, as soon as you see the second raise hand, kindly end your submission. I hope this is clear. Thank you. And so my first question, which I will start with, um, can I please use your first name so that things go easier? Osman. So if I can go to Osman. Osman, can you tell us about the nature and level of your organization's collaboration with other international 
regional and national actors. And here we are talking about organizations, states, refugees, host communities, among others, for managing protracted displacement. Please, Mr. Obeche or Osman, please, if you can put your video on and answer the question for me. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. afternoon again. Good afternoon, the viewers and the participants. Um, as you know, ECOWAS was established in 1975, and ECOWAS is a member of uh, the African Union Commission. Therefore, ECOWAS collaborates with other regions in the African continent to implement programs, uh, particularly aimed at uh, protection of uh, internally displaced persons and then refugees. Uh, the Kampala Convention, for instance, had a, a great input from ECOWAS in its adoption and uh, uh, <clears throat> coming into force, which uh, ECOWAS member states, eight ECOWAS member states, uh, signing into it and then uh, giving it that uh, strength to come into force, which tells you that ECOWAS is greatly uh, involved in uh, assisting uh, to implement programs related to uh, uh, protecting first displaced persons. ECOWAS also has a very strong partnership with the UNHCR, United Nations High Commission for Refugees, and then the, uh, uh, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. These two organizations will have a very strong memorandum of understanding with them, and we hold regular meetings with them. We implement joint programs with uh, the UNHCR, for instance, particularly aimed at uh, protection of uh, protection and then assisting internally displaced persons and refugees. Uh, ECOWAS is also working closely with UNHCR to implement programs aimed at um, eliminating uh, statelessness in the ECOWAS region. Uh, as you know, statelessness is one of the outcomes of uh, forced displacement. And one of the causative factors of uh, statelessness is uh, forced displacement. And ECOWAS is working closely with the uh, UNHCR to uh, make sure this is eliminated as soon as possible from the ECOWAS region. We have strong collaboration with the IOM also, and uh, towards implementing uh, programs aimed at uh, assisting uh, forced displaced persons. Uh, ECOWAS has also done some uh, training and uh, joint uh, exercises with uh, UNHCR, uh, with the IOM, with OCHA. Uh, ECOWAS was in, uh, in Egypt, Tunisia, and um, during the, cri the Libyan crisis, for instance, to assess the situation of the ECOWAS uh, citizens that were stranded uh, as a result of the crisis in Libya. And uh, there, we work closely with IOM. Uh, we joined the IOM uh, through the support of our, our member states to repatriate our citizens that were stranded as a result of the Libyan crisis. Other areas where we do strong collaboration with our partners include uh, developing capacities of uh, member states. The ECOWAS Commission has a tool, a mechanism we call the ECOWAS Emergency Response Team. The ECOWAS Emergency Response Team was established following uh, lessons learned from uh, the displacement situation in the ECOWAS region. Uh, UNHCR came up with, uh, look, there's a, need, there, there, there's a need for you to develop a capacity to be able to assist your persons that are displaced within the region. And to start the emergency response team, the UNHCR supported ECOWAS for the first three years to do training of a selected citizens of ECOWAS member states. The ERT, that is the ECOWAS emergency response team, is still a mechanism that is in force and is being used by ECOWAS. In addition to supporting uh, forced displaced persons, the ERT is also involved in uh, uh, providing humanitarian assistance for uh, disaster affected persons in member states. We support people displaced by flood. We support people, victims of other crises. The ERT was involved in providing uh, some uh, soccer to uh, displaced citizens of uh, Nigeria, for instance, during the COVID-19, uh, where we provided some uh, san uh, sanitary and uh, instructional materials to guide them in protecting themselves against uh, COVID-19. 
Uh, other areas where the ERT is involved in is uh, joining uh, uh, partners to implement programs aimed at uh, providing humanitarian uh, humanitarian action, uh, humanitarian assistance for ECOWAS citizens. Uh, basically, these are some of the areas where ECOWAS partners with uh, uh, our collaborators to implement programs. We are, we, are, we are assisted by the ECOWAS humanitarian policy, and uh, uh, then we are also guided by the Kampala Convention among the uh, instruments we use to implement our programs. I would like to stop here for now, and then uh, maybe as questions come up and respond. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You almost missed my gift for stopping at the exact time. So next time, try to end my toffee. Thank you very much. <laughs> Shall I call on um, Patrice? Patrice, please, the same question. So can you tell us about the nature and level of your organization's collaboration with other international, regional, and national actors for managing protracted displacement? Please, in five minutes, maximum. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you, Dr. Mary, and uh, good afternoon, uh, fellow panelists and, and participants. And uh, thanks to, to, to the Professor Teye and all the uh, Migration Center for, for co-organizing this event. Uh, a partnership for us is 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 key. Is key uh, uh, not only because we have been, uh, you know, not only because we believe in 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 partners, bilateral partnership with uh, the state members that have put in place, you know, our institution UNHCR, but we also believe in in multilateralism. And uh, when it's come to partnership, we we do work with a wide range of a wide range of actors. Uh, uh, the first I can quote I can talk about is the is the government, the different government entities that we 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 have uh, a agreement with that hosted UNHCR as organization to to implement its its mandate for protection international protection, and of course we can't talk about the government without talking about the, the host communities, which generally represent let's say the first entity that provide protection to displaced population because they are always at the forefront, you know, welcoming, showing hospitality, you know, to the refugees and asylum seekers and to the uh, internally displaced person. Uh, so, uh, but beyond that, or in addition to that, we, we can talk about partnership without, uh, you know, referring to, to, to the development actors, especially when it's come to, to, to solutions for, for refugees and asylum seekers. Development actors uh, represent also an important, you know, uh, uh, element of, 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 of how we, you know, we, we do business. And here I would like to talk about briefly uh, the World Bank, uh, uh, the African Development Bank and other entities, you know, that also provide a, a important uh, opportunities to increase refugees' economic powers, to increase asylum seeker economic powers, Toward solution, and uh, last but not least is you know the regional economic community. Then Mr. 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 Usman has uh, extensively talked about how you know ECOWAS as regional economic communities work with UNHCR on various various aspects, and uh, allow me here to echo, you know, the joint partnership between ECOWAS, you know, plus the state members of ECOWAS, the member state of ECOWAS how this has brought an important you know improvement when it's come to refugee law in the region uh, i can i can uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, the refugee law reform that is ongoing in in liberia that is ongoing in uh, in uh, in uh, in sierra leone that is ongoing in, in senegal in niger as well where not only the state as that has the primary responsibility to protect is playing a key role but ECOWAS has been very, you know, uh, uh, critical and and uh, and uh, 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 supportive in the whole process when it's come to uh, law, legislative, and normative reform on on asylum. Uh, uh, other key instances that I can quote as well when it's come because we are talking about solution, it would be good also to highlight how a, a partnership with state and with ECOWAS has brought. Uh, important lo local integration opportunities for refugees, and I can talk about the the situation of the of the Senegalese refugees who are in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, uh, last the last two years, we have seen through through our partnership, 
how close to 6,000 refugees have been granted citizenship through naturalization. Uh, we, the same situation for, for can, is applicable to some uh, Liberian refugees in, in Ghana, uh, uh, Sierra Leonean refugees in, in Liberia as well, who have been given you know, alternative legal status opportunities thanks to our partnership, not only with the state directly, but also with ECOWAS as you know, regional economic community. So let me, let, let me, let me, let me stop there. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You've earned my, my credits. That's fine. Thank you. Shall I call on Philip? Philip? Philip, if you can also, the same question. Do you want me to retreat the question? No, or you are okay? uh, oh, no it, thank it, you. But thanks. Thanks. Uh, so thanks, please, you have four minutes. You have four minutes. I will give you the raise hand and the second raise hand. Thank you. Please go ahead. No, no, it's it's interesting because uh, we could be uh, as many panelists and, and come with as many uh, as many answers. Though there will be definitely points where we, we that we share. So I'll try to um, to adapt to adjust. And and not knowing so much the audience, uh, I was wondering if it was um, useful maybe to to remember that the the one of the strong framework for. Um, for addressing uh, forced displacement uh, population needs um, has been around OCHA and, and, and the various um, standing committees. So maybe it's worth just uh, remembering that um, at various levels, there has been this kind of a, a partnership to emphasize how important it is to, um, to coordinate so that we are all efficient in the way we are, we are addressing people's needs. So uh, at the global level, um, you've got those, those clusters that try to um, provide uh, general frameworks and that's in, in various sectors. IOM is, is a global uh, co-lead, uh, cluster co-lead uh, for, for CCCM, so camp coordination, camp management uh, with UNHCR. Um, but also part of, of many sectoral groups at the global level, uh, among which uh, the, the, the shelter one. Um, after, at the national level, of course, it echoes a bit what uh, at the global, uh, the structure is at the global level. So at the national level, it changes, it, it, it evolves, but you've got uh, forums where IOM and so forth, many uh, Many all the UN agencies are coordinating, uh, which is uh, the the the, the country, UN country team, um, and in countries where you've got a humanitarian situation, so what we are talking about today, uh, you've got the humanitarian country team um, that includes um, UN agencies, but also of course uh, NGOs, national and, and international NGOs. Um, uh, having said that, coordination is one thing. You also need to agree on um, on programs and what are the, the the needs and who and how will be uh, will be addressed the needs. And so you've got different plans: the the humanitarian uh, response plan at the national level and the uh, uh, refugees uh, response plan at the, um, uh, when it comes to to refugees. Uh, and so you have one for the West, uh, Western, uh, Western Africa, which is around Nigeria. So that involves um, the countries, neighboring countries. Uh, I, I would definitely let you and the to, to talk about that because they are the one chairing it and leading it strongly. So, um, so uh, of course, at the regional level, and, and thank you, appreciate it. Um, the, we've got a, a, a strong par a partnership with ECOWAS uh, on, on various issues, uh, more on, on the freedom of movement of, uh, of migrants uh, throughout the, the, the region with a strong protocol, but also um, involved in, um, in the transhumance and how ECOWAS with the, the, the network of herders, regional network of herders, RBM, are trying also to, uh, to bring along uh, all the member states by, by corridors uh, to have a, a coordinated um, approach. And so we are trying to, IOM is, is trying to, to, to work um, in, in support of ECOWAS efforts 
to um, to monitor and, and support policies at the national level and again promoting multilateralism. So I think uh, after to avoid just having to repeat, maybe the, the following question will be able to um, to develop further. Thanks again, Mary. I've been thank you very much. Thank you, thank Thanks. you, thank you. You didn't even make me raise my hand. Do you have any more thing to say <laughs> before? <laughs> I didn't even raise my hand. That means you have used, you still have some time if you have something to say. Thank you. Okay, so now our last speaker will be, um, for this round of questions will be Mr. Paddy. Tete. Tete. Yes, thank you. Yes, please, yeah. So you have five minutes to please. Okay, thank you. Right. So um, the Ghana Refugee Board uh, partners with uh, with UNHCR. Uh, first of all, we have um, some formal arrangements with uh, some partners, and UNHCR is one of the, the, the agencies that we have a formal arrangements with. We have we sign um, annual uh, project partnership agreements. And then also, uh, our other major partner, obviously, is the government of Ghana, who also uh, contributes uh, financially on an annual basis towards the refugee program. We have very strong collaboration also with the, with some government agencies who uh, uh, help with uh, ensuring that uh, refugees are protected. Um, the, the, the critical ones are, I can recall immediately are the Ministry of the Interior, um, the, the Ghana Police Service, the Ghana Immigration Service. Uh, we have um, the Ministry of Education as well, who provide a service for refugees. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is also one of our key partners. Um, and then uh, academia as well. The academia assist us um, to, to formulate a refugee policy. And so they are also a very key partner of ours. Uh, we have other arrangements with um, other agencies uh, on ad hoc basis. Um, some NGOs, for instance, uh, I can single out the International Committee for the Red Cross, for instance, when we have an influx, we call on some of these agencies to assist us, manage some aspects of the, 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 the influx. Uh, another critical agency I can recall is the um, the legal aid scheme, it's a government agency. Um, they assist us in providing legal services for refugees who may need them. Um, they, they, very, they come very much in handy because, uh, as, as we all know, refugees are not able to um, fund their own legal services. And so that is one of the critical agencies that, that we, we work with. Now, I cannot uh, mention partners without mentioning the host communities. Thankfully, here in Ghana, we have very good relationships between the host communities and, and uh, ourselves and the refugees. And uh, this, this has enabled us to make sure that refugees receive the adequate, the necessary level of protection that, that they need. Uh, it's already been mentioned that host communities are key when it comes to protection for refugees. Um, we, we the, the relationship between I think Ghana is a very good example of host community refugee uh, relationships or collaborations because we have um, excellent excellent uh, co collaboration between the two and uh, that that helps make our work very easy. Um, uh, we also get a lot of assistance from individuals, also on ad hoc basis. People uh, call us from time to time to contribute to uh, providing assistance for refugees. Um, so those are the key uh, partnerships that I can mention. As I mentioned, we have some formal arrangements with government and with UNHCR. So these, these are regular uh, contributors to the refugee program. And um, some, yeah, so I think I will end here for now. And then um, in, in, uh, subsequently, if there are any questions, I can come in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. My cherry speakers you've done so well so you've given us some time and i think we can zoom into some more interesting discussions i will start with um patrice patrice this is very interesting i guess you would want to answer how relevant do you think from where you stand how relevant is the global compact for refugees for partnerships for managing forced displacement patrice Paddy, please. Tete, you can please put your hand down. Yeah. 
to not to confuse us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank th thank you very much, Dr. Mary. Uh, the, the global compact for, for refugees, uh, as we all know, is a, is a framework that gave us a unique opportunity, unique opportunity for more engagement with uh, various range of actors. Uh, 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 we can talk about an avenue that the global compact gave us is to strengthen you know, multilateralism when it's come to protect international protection. And uh, one of the key aspects that I need to quote here, which is which is we, we, we are we are going through it now, is is the the, the partnership with academia, uh, uh, because as long as we 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 don't continue, you know, analyzing you know refugees uh, uh, presence as an opportunity, uh, uh, you, you know, for for host community, uh, as long as we don't collect data on this kind of element. As long as we 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 don't continue doing more studies, more surveys, you know, to see how instead of you know looking at refugees as, as burden, but looking at look at refugees as as economic power, look at refugees as those who are not only job finders but also job creators. So academia, you know, brings us this perspective, and uh, and this is something that uh, you know the Global Compact for Refugees has allowed us you know to to strengthen better. Uh, uh, another important element uh, uh, when it's come to the GCR is how also our partnership with uh, with uh, uh, World Bank and, and Council of Asylum, uh, you know, has been uh, you know strengthened. Uh, uh, and when it's it's it come to not only you know uh, uh, providing conditionalities for 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 you know. A better protection for refugees, but also bringing states to 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 do better, to do more uh, in terms of responsibility sharing, and this we have seen it vividly in uh, in uh, in few countries in Western Central Africa. Is in Chad, we have seen how the World Bank, you know, supports the the, the asylum country and also the host community to ensure that. Uh, uh, the inclusion aspect is 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 taken into consideration. We have seen the same thing in Burkina Faso, uh, and, and also in Cameroon and in and in Niger, where our partnership today, thanks to the Global Compact on Refugee with uh, with uh, 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 the World Bank, has been you know ha ha has 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 witnessed a new a new a new shape, a positive shape, uh, to continue providing protection to to refugees and, and asylum seekers, and also. And also to host communities, because we don't say it much, but GCR give us this opportunity with host communities. Another key element when it's come to, to GCR is today we are able to, to talk about more complementary pathways. The third, when we say third country solution, until recently, our focus was more on resettlement. But today we talk more also about complementary pathways. And states are playing a key role, and and uh, academia is playing a key role. You know, faith-based organizations are playing a key role when it's come to support refugees for you know education scholarship, and support refugees also when it's come to labor mobility, which is an opportunity we that we didn't have before or that were not sufficiently explored before. And uh, allow me here to say that. Uh, uh, this is an area when it's come to uh, labor mobility that we think we need to do more in West and Central Africa through the GCR, of course, because just in West and Central Africa, you have 69% okay, of the refugees who are originated from this region. And among them, you have more than 37% who have been here, who have been in the re, in, on, in, on, on, uh, who have been in, in a protracted situation for the last uh, you know, 10 years. So how do we maximize this as an opportunity? Because many of them have, uh, you know, are from the region and also uh, have been trained with resources from this region. How can they give back, give back to the region? So these are things we think that we need to explore better with ECOWAS, thanks to the, to the protocol on free movement to, to better strengthen, you know, the labor mobility opportunities that GCR offer. And uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Mary. Thank you, Patrice. Thank you. It's very interesting to hear from the UN angle. Before I come to Philip, 
Philip, just to also give us another dimension of you. And maybe let me move into the, um, the regional dimension. Um, Osman, can you tell us how relevant the Global Compact for Refugees for um, partner, helps us to manage partnerships in this context? Osman, yeah. from, from, your, from where you stand as a, a regional body. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, we, as a region, we have uh, accepted and acknowledged that um, uh, refugees are not just burdens. There's a large resource available in them. And that has been evident in some of the things that uh, have emanated from them in recent times. Some of the refugees, uh, Sierra Leonean and Liberian refugees that um, found themselves in Nigeria, and um, were locally integrated following the multi partite agreement between uh, ECOWAS, Nigeria, and the two country concerned. Uh, involved in so many activities in Nigeria, as I speak to you today. Some of them have even gone into government employment. Some of them have uh, uh, capacity. Some of them are even entrepreneurs. So therefore, the GCF for, for instance, at the level of ECOWAS, is considered very, very key. And I tell you, between last year and now, we have held three different conversation opportunity, uh, conversations with the UNHCR on how to improve this, uh, this initiative. Uh, because um, notwithstanding that there are, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, unemployment realities in the ECOWAS region, we, we understand and appreciate that if the refugees can be integrated and given opportunities to, to showcase their talents, and God-given capabilities, then that idea of their, their burdens will not arise. And this is the, this is the way Kowaz views the Geneva uh, uh, concept. And then we are encouraging member states uh, strongly uh, through our joint partnership with uh, uh, the UNHCR to key into it. This is where we are so far. Thank you. Thank you very much, Osman. That's very insightful. So I hope, um, you are you are mobilizing effort to come and explain how you are implementing this at the local ground. So let me move to Philip. Philip, also give us the IOM dimension. So how relevant is the global compact for partnerships, um, please? I know uh, global compact for refugee. I wouldn't be the best specialist. I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I wouldn't be able to talk about that, um, but I, I would definitely uh, concur with uh, what Patrice was saying, and, and similarly to, to migrants, as, as you might know, they might, you, there is also a, a similar effort to bring and to um, yeah to to bring uh, member states to to have. Um, a sound policy when it comes to monitoring or to managing migration also in their own countries. And, and that's what we call the, the GCM, Global Compact for Migration. And so I, I concur with, with Patrice about the importance also to give value to, um, to, to migrants, understanding that the region, and we've got uh, tools to, to monitor um, migration uh, in throughout the, the the continent, but mostly in Western Central Africa, um, and and it's true that most of the migrations are internal to Western and Central Africa. So at, at eighty, maybe ninety, even sometimes ninety percent of the, the the flows of the the, the migration is happening internally to um, to western and central africa so it's a, it's a huge potential for development and um, and and so the global we, we believe that the global compact for migration uh, such as uh, the global compact for, for refugees um, is is the right an interesting framework uh, to promote those potentials and to protect also uh, migrants from and ensure that they um, they are also um, inscribed in all the um, uh, protection network, protection uh, net, net um, protection uh, safety net. So, um, so that uh, sorry for for maybe a, a side uh, answer, um, but uh, but this is it for for the when it comes to a global compact. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. But what I get from the UN is that we are having a lived experience as we are doing this conference, which is good. Now I tend to Tete, can you tell us, so at the local level, you heard what um, Osman said, that they are encouraging our member states, their member states to implement the, the GCR. So how relevant is it to the Ghanaian um, community right. and beyond? Um, so um, unfortunately, Ghana uh, does not meet the criteria to be uh, included or assisted in the GCR. However, we we feel that uh, we, we could make we could be a good very good example. Uh, Ghana, even though we only have thirteen thousand seven hundred or so refugees, uh, I mean the, the the criteria is that you should, the population of the refugees should be about one percent of the population. We don't have those numbers, but we have refugees from as many as about thirty eight different countries, and so that gives you an idea of what goes into uh, planning for such a population. Um, you, you need to take all the various uh, the needs and the, 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 all the, the various characteristics into, into consideration. And, uh, and so what we have done, uh, what we've been doing is that we've uh, drawn up what we call the job solution strategy. Um, the intention is to uh, engage the private sector um, to, to start up businesses that will employ refugees and host communities. And uh, we, we, we're doing this with the aim that um, we will then be able to uh, encourage or convince the, 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 the funders to include us in the GCR. Indeed, we have been speaking to the World Bank and um, they have indicated that if, if we're able to implement our strategy, they will definitely be interested. Uh, and so we've also engaged government agencies that uh, that can assist in this regard. Uh, for instance, the National Board for Small Scale Industries and the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. These are some of the agencies that we've spoken to to uh, partner us um, in identifying identifying um, 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 the uh, organizations from the private sector who will be interested to take advantage of refugee and host community um, skills and labor. In, able to, in order to set up some of these um, uh, industries and some of these agricultural uh, programs. And uh, hopefully that, that will enable us to be included in, in the GCR program. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope Patrice has heard you. The information will go directly to where it's supposed to go to. So may, let me stay on you, Tete. Still come back. So give us maybe a much more practical experience of what goes on underground. So are there any best practices and lessons on the involvement of refugees and host community members in managing forced displacement and protecting forcibly displaced persons? Yes, um, I think that in Ghana very well in um, including refugees a national program. So for instance, um, refugees attend school uh, in Ghana. Um, Ghanaians have the free compulsory universal basic education, what we call the FQP. Refugees take part in this, so they also receive free um, 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 primary education. Uh, apart from that, refugees are also included in the recent free senior high school education. And um, they're very much a part of the national systems. I think that they, the, the, the key thing is to include them in the national system so that they receive services at the same level as Ghanaians. Um, at tertiary level, it's more competitive. Uh, that the, the, There's no free education, but we, we advocate for refugees to pay the same fees that local uh, or that, that Ghanaians pay rather than foreign fees. So that's another area that we, we, we are assisting refugees in which we believe is, is can be used as can, can serve as best practice. It's the same with health. Refugees are enrolled on the National Health Insurance Scheme. And they receive the same level of services that that uh, Ghanaians receive. So, in short, the, the 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 practice that we recommend, which we have implemented and which we recommend, is for refugees to be. For, for the refugee program or for assistance to refugees 
to be incorporated into the national systems and uh, ensure it also makes sure that nobody is left out and that they, 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 they are well taken care of and given the necessary levels of protection. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, on this one, let me just throw it. If um, any of the speakers would want to contribute to any of the best practices of involving refugees um, in any form, please just raise your hand and share your contribution. Otherwise, I have an, another question for Patrice. Any hand raised or I can move on? Okay, so let me move on to Patrice. Patrice, my question we are in we've covered is around us and so i want to know are there any lessons of partnerships that is working well during this covid 19 pandemic era patrice patrice uh, while we are waiting for patrice hello hello Hello. Yeah, Hello. We can hear you. We can hear you, Mary. Okay. You. So while we are waiting for Patrice, um, please, yeah. I encourage our cherished audience yeah. to to make use of the Q and A. Yes, yeah, yes, I can hear you, but please hold on. Let me just give um, this tiny um, instruction, please. So. Our dear cherished um, audience, the Q&A session is there. Please send in your questions. Very soon I'll be coming to you to receive your questions. Thank you. Patrice, please, did you hear my question? My question is, are there any lessons of partnerships that is working well during this COVID-19 pandemic era? Please, you can come in. Yeah, yes, yes, thank you, thank you. I mean, what, what the biggest lesson during this uh, this COVID nineteen uh, uh, pandemic for us is is the partnership with host communities and the partnership with refugees themselves. You know, uh, it's true that partnership with refugees, you know, goes without saying that we we need to do so in order to strengthen our our accountability. But with this uh, COVID nineteen, what we have experienced is that you know many many remote areas you know are no more accessible due to the you know the restriction that government have uh, uh, restriction measure that government have have taken you know for for a good reason so the best partner we have today when it's come to you know uh, uh, awareness raising on covid you know uh, uh, need assessment you know of, of our our uh, how we do programming for instance and and also to some extent implementation you know of some of our activities because we can't access all the all the remote areas because on top of covid we also have the security situation that is deteriorating in many in many in, in many you know uh, areas where, where we are supposed to operate so we have both covid and security element so the key partnership the key lesson learned that we have today is to continue you know working and uh, uh, raising the bar and uh, and supporting the capacity building activities of both host community and refugees themselves so that they can i will not say that we will we will hand over to them activities but i will say that we will continue supporting the development of their capacity so that they can contribute to their own protection this is how one of the key lessons learned that we, we 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 took from from this COVID, and another partnership element that is very key in this COVID era is you know, strengthening our partnership, not only with the government entity at a national level, but also at the, at the feed level, because the inclusion aspect, the inclusion of refugees in, in health, you know, initiative, in public health initiative, the inclusion of refugees in, in government activities, you know, uh, linked to COVID is, is another example that we have seen in, in many instances when it's come to social safety net program that government is promoting, for instance, in, in, in Cameroon. We have seen clearly, you know, that this partnership is, 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 is bearing fruit. And the, the last point on partnership when it's come to COVID era is our work with the national human rights institution. We know that many of them have, you know, constitutional uh, functions and uh, many of them not only uh, uh, advocate for refugees to be included, but also advocate for any 
population, any affected population, any vulnerable group to be included in government plans to ensure that uh, yes, restri rest restriction measures are in place, uh, but we also want to have a space where freedom of movement is being observed to continue supporting you know, economic power of vulnerable population. So it has been very tremendous for us to continue working with the National Human Rights Institution, both in, in Cameroon, uh, in, in Cote d'Ivoire, in, uh, in, in Mali as well, and uh, recently a, a, an emerging uh, a, a partnership that we are also working on with the National Human Rights Commission in Chad. So these are just few instances that I can quote and uh, uh, that we should take as lesson learned during this COVID. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrice. Uh, Osman, Osman, the same question. Any lessons of partnership that is working well during this COVID-19 pandemic era? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, during my uh, initial uh, <coughs> contribution, I spoke of uh, how we intervened to assist the internally displaced persons in Nigeria during the COVID uh, to educate them and to provide sanitary uh, materials. We did that in collaboration with uh, the, the National um, uh, Red Cross, for instance, in Nigeria. Uh, as a region, we, we normally we collaborate with the government as a whole. But uh, this time around, in order to uh, deliver the, the product properly, we work directly with the National uh, Red Cross uh, Society of Nigeria to provide assistance to the IDPs in Nigeria. We have been working throughout this period, notwithstanding the restrictions in the moment, we have been working with the UNHCR. Uh, we've held a series of uh, virtual meetings, all aimed at uh, coordinating and uh, implementing programs aimed at assisting uh, <clears throat> refugees and uh, people, uh, people, seek, people, people seeking asylum. We have also worked and we are still working with uh, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. Uh, we've done a number of uh, online meetings. We intend to do more. And uh, we've also done even trainings. When we intend to carry this further to the member states, uh, as I speak to you, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm also discussing with some, some uh, uh, colleagues in member states, unfortunately, on go to our meetings with them next week on, online uh, on how we can implement programs towards assisting affected population. These are some of the partnerships that uh, we have been able to uh, uh, conduct during the period of the COVID. Thank you. Thank you very much. Philip. Um, Philip, yes. let me move on to any other, if you have a contribution in this direction, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. No, no, um, it, it's uh, an interesting and even, um, well, coming third is always a, um, an opportunity to complement. And, and I think, the, indeed, um, the pandemic uh, was also, uh, uh, had an uh, accelerating factor um, towards more localization. Uh, localization has been promoted for, for many years now, um, part of, of many reforms and, and questioning about how we can do better uh, in, in, uh, once we, we are in the field. Uh, and, and yes, uh, acknowledging that um, the host communities and uh, also uh, some of the, the IDPs are the first respondent, uh, definitely the host communities, are, are the first respondent. It, it has been for some years important to, um, to build their capacity and to ensure that, uh, that they would be uh, better fit to, to address uh, the needs, to address the needs of the IDPs, but also their needs and, and be there for more, more resilience as, as a community. Um, so, uh, the, the pandemic, because of the restriction, Patrice was, was mentioning, um, restriction of movement of uh, colleagues uh, in the field, um, the, the whole way to uh, manage camp, IDP camps, 
and I would suspect the same for HCR on uh, in refugee camps has been uh, has been reviewed uh, and with a, a greater emphasis on uh, on building the capacity of the IDPs who were living in in the camps uh, to become. Um, to 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 become uh, stronger actors in communicating, for instance, so the, the the community engagement around the information over the the virus and and the way it was it could be transmitted and could be prevented transmission could be prevented, but also in day to day um, management. Um, so so I think that's that has been something. Good, if we may. Um, and talking of partnership, also uh, the, the the restriction of movement and the borders being closed has impacted also uh, nomadic uh, population. And um, and um, so therefore we've been we are currently working with ECOWAS and also with the National uh, Transhumans Committee uh, of, of seven countries of the Central um, Corridor to uh, get a better understanding of the situation as uh, herds and herders have been uh, blocked due to the restriction and has entailed enforced, uh, unfortunately also uh, tensions as uh, herd uh, could have been have been blocked in areas that were not meant to uh, to sustain uh, such a, a long uh, station. So um, it has um, multiple impacts, and but it has also many opportunities. I'm talking about the herders and the impact that the, the COVID had uh, on on their capacity to move, because also it has been it is an opportunity to bring uh, the local authorities and herders and also farmers to um, to review some of the cooperation or sometimes establish new cooperation links uh, for to, to sustain uh, peace or, or to prevent a crisis. So, um, so pa stronger partnerships definitely um, with uh, local communities, but also with some uh, networks of uh, civil of the civil society. And it's interesting because it was also an opportunity to uh, beef up the, the link they, the civil society has with local authorities, relevant uh, line ministries. I hope I answered. Thanks. Yeah, you do, you did, you did. Thank you very much. Okay, so let me put, we are rounding up almost there. Let me just put my last que um, questions together. Questions. One, One, maybe, hello, hello. Yeah, we can can hear you, you hear me, please? Yeah, okay, thank venture. you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, so I'm coming back to Tete, if you can unmute. So what are, maybe just tell us some three, at least maximum, um, three challenges that you, you've been facing, which are associated with partnerships, and maybe another three recommendations that you would want us to consider going forward. Thank you. Tata, is your question, please, if you can show your face. Hello? Okay. If Tata is not picking up. Yes. Uh, okay. no, yeah, I you are back. So if, you can, if you can repeat it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I'm asking three key challenges that confront you with regards to partnership and three key recommendations you may put on board. If you have less, that's fine, but three maximum. Thank you. Right. Okay. So, so the key, the key one is funding. There's, there's so much more we would like to do, but um, due to the fact that we don't have enough funding, um, we are not able to implement all our, our, our policies, our project, our programs. Um, and unfortunately, our numbers too are not that many. And so, our main source of funding, which is UNHCR, uh, who have responsibility in other countries, considered more of emergencies uh, means that the 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 funding uh, the priorities are those other countries than than us and so that that is the key challenge that that we have um, another one is um, sometimes government to approve our, 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 our 
the, our proposals, um, some of the, the policies that we need to implement. A uh, typical example is um, pal integration. Uh, it takes some time um, for some reason to get government, it, and it cuts across governments. It doesn't matter which uh, party is in power in Ghana. Uh, it takes a little bit of the, the time and discussion before local integration policies are approved. And, and this delays the implementation and sometimes results in us uh, losing funding. Uh, and so those, those, those are some of the, the, the challenges that, that we face, the key challenges that we face. Thank you. Thank you very much. And in answering that, you are also, you are, you've also answered some of the questions in the Q&A. Um, I asked for recommendations also. Okay, so let me move to um, Osman. Osman, the same question to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Teta, are you um, back? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. Okay, please go, yes, I'm go back. on. Yes, I don't know when you lost me. <laughs> I don't know when, okay, when so you lost we'll, me. If you have um, another chance, what we want you to say, to tell us some key recommendations so that Patrice will go along with it. And your... Regional okay. body will also go with it. Um, can you hear us? If you can okay, hear us, so, we can go on, then when you come, um, okay. I, I can hear you, I can hear you. Okay, then you please, please go ahead. Yes, quickly, please. I hear you loud and clear. Okay, go uh, ahead. Go ahead, Tete. Okay, okay. Yeah, so recommendations, um, Key, key recommendations is uh, one first one is engaging the host community because they are the they are the, 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 the basically the, the most important uh, group of, of, of persons that um, make refugees stay in, in, in the country or in the community comfortable and so we engage the host communities right from start if we need to settle refugees anywhere um, and then also with the assistance of UNHCR we provide a lot of uh, assistance to the community through um, implementing um, um, projects, providing social amenities and so on. We also include the host community in planning for the, the, the refugee program, for the annual programs. We, we, we engage the host communities and make sure that uh, they are with us in, in all our planning. And then they know also what we intend to implement. Um, um, apart from that, uh, earlier on I mentioned um, including refugees in the national programs. That has worked perfectly for us. Uh, and so the recommendation, my recommendation would be that uh, governments or, or refugee programs should be uh, included in the mainstream national uh, programs to ensure that refugees are not left behind and have access to the adequate levels of protection uh, the adequate levels of social uh, services, um, just as, as, as the, 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 the host countries nationals do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Osman, please, can you come back? After that, Philippe, Philippe, you also share something, and then we go to Patrice to hear you too. Please, Osman, take the floor. Thank you very much. Very quickly, um, one of, one of uh, my very important recommendations will be advocacy and sensitization. And um, I'm glad because this has to, we have to do more of this for the member states, for the first displaced persons and for the, in the inter international community. You know, we need to tell more so that they can know more about the plight of these people and what we need to do to improve their lives. So, and I'm glad one of, one of such is what you're doing now. You know, another one is a uh, training we need to go down to the grassroots to train both the refugees and the local people so that they understand themselves and then understand what they need to do to make their lives better. Another area I would like us to improve upon is uh, information sharing and um, you know, a, a effective partnership. Uh, oftentimes, um, one organization is doing something in a particular place and the other is uninformed about it. And then it leads to duplication and sometimes uh, uh, misinformation and then creates uh, uh, what we try to avoid, do no harm. 
<laughs> Another area again is that um, for for as as you hold these kinds of uh, uh, interactions, you educate and inform more of maybe the private the private uh, organizations the, so that they can get more involved in providing humanitarian assistance generally. These are some of the very quick recommendations I want to give. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe a, a, a strong one strong challenge that faces um, ECOWAS and especially your office with regards to effective partnership, please. Yes, a strong challenge we have is data. We have serious problem of data, okay? Um, mm. we, we, we are oftentimes even scared of giving information about what happens in member states because it's, the member states are not giving us the accurate data and when we get data from maybe the open source, it becomes a problem. So we need to get uh, good data from both the member states, the local community, and the international community, including our partners. It's very, very key mm -hmm. to us. Uh, in addition mm -hmm. to, of course, the general, the general challenge, which is funding. We don't have mm -hmm. enough resources, so we need more fund. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Osman. On this note, I, I move to the big brothers, Philip and Patrice. Philip, please, can you go ahead? <laughs> Okay. No, no, thanks. Thanks, Mary. And, and thank you, Mr. Obishe. Uh, I think it's a, a very important point, uh, the, 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 well, all, but definitely the last one. And, and that's why we, I, IOM is, is trying to, um, to, is working currently with RBM, so the network of herders at the, at the regional level, but also ECOWAS, uh, in trying to bring the member states to share uh, a common methodology also in collecting data, um, because it, it's one thing to understand a, a situation in a country, um, but since the situations are very fluid uh, throughout the, um, the, 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 the region, it is also important to be able to have a, to, a common uh, approach to data from one country to another so that we can also understand dynamics, uh, cross-border dynamics, and so therefore better address also uh, and anticipate potentially the, the, the needs as we understand trends. Um, and again, that data is, is important, but also having regular data collection exercises so that you don't have just one picture, but you have, you, you, you're able to, um, to identify trends and by identifying trends, I don't want to, 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 to say that we can anticipate, but we, we are definitely better prepared. Um, so uh, that's uh, an important work, and I'm glad, uh, but I, I, I knew it already. We knew it already that ECOWAS was, was, was very keen in trying to promoting um, homogeneous approach and, and, um, and best practices in terms of data collection when it comes to, to, to member states on, on various subjects. Uh, I'm particularly talking about uh, nomadic herders and because it's, it, it's um, those transhumans and because of climate change and, and acute competition for access to, to, resource, uh, to natural resources, it generates conflict which generates further displacements, forced displacement. So hence uh, why I got involved in, in, in this subject. But nevertheless, to, to go back um, to, um, to the challenges we see also um, is as, and I would like to refer to my first question when I was uh, introducing the various mechanism, coordination mechanism, uh, coordination is key, but also as uh, as competition is very strong for funding, it um, it it um, corrupts somehow uh, the capacity of everyone to, to 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 do sound coordination because of course we can agree on plans, but if the funds are not coming, uh, it's difficult to address the needs. And from one agency or one organization to another, uh, the level of funds uh, might not be the one anticipated uh, when the HRP. Uh, was agreed, and so therefore it creates uh, some some problem and can have serious impact on the situation on the ground. So, uh, so that's a, a, a big uh, challenge: competition and the need also for transparency, so that we can all adjust the plans according to um, the, the funding received by by uh, such and such uh, organization. Second challenge is um, going back to localization is uh, we often come in situation where um, 
uh, NGOs, local NGOs had more development background. And when it comes to a uh, humanitarian situation that requires to apply uh, humanitarian principles, um, there might be sometimes uh, a serious need for, for capacity building so that uh, NGOs, local NGOs, who move from development to humanitarian understand um, the need for impartiality, neutrality, uh, understanding that sometimes uh, from uh, local NGOs that have been um, founded along uh, community or livelihood uh, lines or, or religious lines, um, the, um, the principle, the humanitarian principles are not necessarily a given. So, um, so it's, um, it's uh, a strong challenge and it's important to, to ensure that once uh, the assistance is delivered in the field, it is meeting indeed the, the, the humanitarian uh, principles. Um, in terms of recommendation, um, well, it, it comes uh, without saying. So uh, capacity building at all level is, is important. And also uh, being able to, uh, on our side, uh, to adjust also to, uh, to context. So of course, being able to um, build the capacity where, where it's needed, but also be able to uh, set the right tools uh, to understand clearly what the situation in detail, what are the, the, the micro conflict, uh, micro local conflict that feed tensions um, and better understanding perception of, of everyone in, in better, uh, to, to better adapt the, the, the answer. So, um, so of course, you need to be two to tango and we all need to, to work. Okay. Thanks, thank Mary. you. Thank you very much. Now, Patrice, please, those, um, I have a lot of questions in there, but I'm not going, I'll come back to some of the specific ones which have not been addressed. But if you have, um, I know you are following, you've realized that some of the questions on challenges have been asked, recommendations, I'm already asking them. So please mm -hmm. don't think that I've ignored these because I'm summing all of them together to ask them. But I'll come back after Patrice's contribution to ask okay. some specific questions which I think have not been addressed. Thank you very much, thank my you. cherished audience. Thank, <laughs> thank you, thank, Patrice. Please thank go. Thank you, on. thank you, Dr. Mary. I, I think I will I will focus now on on few recommendations. I and I can't agree more. You know, with colleagues when when they talk about data, and data element is very key because uh, uh, you know uh, being able to have common common tools for data collection give us a, a, an important capacity you know, in terms of also being able to have a joint data analysis. So doing joint data analysis or consequently give us a room for joint advocacy and give us also a room for, for joint programming. And joint programming is, is, is key because we do know that, you know, the needs are enormous and UNHCR taken in isolation or IOM taken in isolation or any other entity taken in isolation cannot be able to provide or to address all the needs that refugee asylum seeker or uh, IDPs have. So we need to focus on this and ensure that we can be able to do joint programming. It's not always easy because we don't always have the same planning process, but as long as we, are, we agree on the protection narrative, it means that yes, we can do something together to, to, for the betterment of the of the lives of refugees and asylum seekers, because joint programming not only increase our own capacities but also increase the implementation capacity that we can have together, you know, and also uh, enlarge our presence in areas where we have not been or other entities have not been, and where we are together, as we always say, you know, together we are strong. So this is something we need to we need to we need to to record as one of the key recommendations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mary. Thank you very much, Patrice. So, thank you, my cherished speakers. I'm coming to the Q and A. There are a few questions that perhaps um, maybe your answers didn't reflect what the audience were thinking. So I'm just um, I've I'm throwing light on some of them. So please, if you want to answer that question from the panelists, kindly use the raise hand function so that I call you, please. Okay, so I'll ask the question from Dr. Toto. 
it says that what are the i'm not reading exactly I'm, i have to paraphrase it so what are the coordination challenges and how can they be overcome please if you have the answer kindly um, use the raise hand what are the coordination challenges and how can they be overcome please and there is also maybe while we are waiting for a raise hand, there is also one by Dr. Kandilige. That's also if you can share light on um, public-private partnerships in providing support to refugees um, during situations such as this um, current COVID-19 pandemic. And so these questions, and there is one that is directed at Paddy. It says it's from. Uh, Mr. Ajono, it says that um, he's interested in knowing the job solution strategy for refugees in Ghana and how these ones also trickle down to the um, district's assemblies and how can you um, collaborate with the local um, government to do that. So that goes to Tete. And so please, if you have any contribution to the coordination challenges and recommendations or the um or the one by dr kandiligay which also is looking at this um public and um, private partnerships during this period okay Tete, i i see that your video is on so if you want to talk please yeah please go yes. ahead so we are almost closing so please that's one question sure um yes we we, we are engaging the the districts uh we're engaging the 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 local um the, the local authorities we are engaging the uh, traditional authorities um and then we're engaging businesses also in the local communities where refugees are hosted and um, and as i mentioned earlier we've, we've selected some strategic um, partners that we are engaging but we certainly cannot do anything in the host communities without first engaging the district authorities and the, and the traditional authorities. So they're very much um, a, a part of, of, of the plan. And uh, they, we, we don't only uh, uh, tell them what we want to do, but we also solicit uh, an input, we solicit input from them and uh, to make sure that they also um, have, uh, they, they, they feel that they feel they have some ownership of, of, of the program. I hope that answers the question, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, Obeche, Patrice, Osman, please, if you have anything to share on the coordination, the public-private, or if, Teta, you have anything to say, please. Philip, do you want to contribute to that? Well, I, I, I can if you want, um, but the coordination, you know, it's it's like uh, in any business, it's it's always easier to work alone and 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 not coordinate. But the thing is that it it has terrible effect um, when it comes to humanitarian uh, settings. I, 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 I would take just a, a small example uh, to justify why coordination is important. Um, you, when uh, an area opens after months weeks, years of conflict, um, assistance is made easier. Uh, but so, of course, everyone would be tempted to just stick to the highway and, and not go in, in the bush uh, where there's still uncertainty and, and, and more logistics burden and, and things like this. But what happens is that if we do not coordinate to ensure that delivery is happening everywhere in an in a equitable uh, way, uh, everybody will deliver assistance along the road and, and uh, the villages that are a bit remote uh, will not get anything. So understanding that, and I think all, all the, the, the members of every cluster uh, understand that uh, coordination is, is, uh, is not even questionable. But of course, it, it requires um, to have good data which sometimes lack, and sometimes you've got competition over, over figures. Uh, we, we need to agree on that, I think. 
Um, and uh, no one is so much equal uh, when it comes to funding also. So of course, uh, that, that doesn't help so much coordination because coordination will be done then by the one who has the most money. And, um, and again, the, the competition is, is about uh, also trying to ensure that you can be as close uh, as uh, to deliver to the roads than not be the one uh, directed towards the, the very remote villages. So there is competition, but there is definitely a, a need for this coordination. And I think a, a lot depends on, uh, on data but also on the personality of the leadership. And I'm, I'm thinking about the humanitarian coordinators and their capacity to mobilize uh, all agencies around um, collective outcomes and, 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 and around uh, a, a shared distribution of uh, assistance. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, Asman, do you have anything to say since your video is on? Uh, just very quickly on the public-private okay. partnership. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, more and more we 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 acknowledge that uh, the the private en enterprise is very key in implementing humanitarian assistance for affected populations. They a lot of them helped, especially during the period of the lockdown, which affected the whole world. Uh, it went global. Uh, some of them facilitated the delivery of uh, humanity. I mean, uh, uh, food food uh, items to uh, people who could not uh, afford during the period. But uh, the area I want to quickly uh, hint on and then uh, maybe uh, hammer on and then uh, appeal to the private uh, enterprises in the area of uh, laying off staff. Uh, in the, in the, in, during this period, a lot of people lost their jobs, especially in the private, in the private enterprise. A lot of people lost their jobs. Uh, I would like us to encourage the private enterprise. If it's um, because as you throw more people into the unemployment market, you're creating more situation for the people, more security problems, uh, and of course it's affecting the economy. And we all know that most of our member states, if not all, uh, have serious economic problems resulting from the impact of the COVID-19. So the private uh, enterprise is encouraged and I want to appeal that uh, we have to find a way to encourage them to support the, the, the measures put in place by government. Uh, for that to this, as we as we 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 get into the delivery of the <clears throat> of the of the vaccines for the for COVID-19, um, I think it is important that uh, the private enterprise support governments in uh, in uh, maybe bearing some of the cost of these uh, vaccines. So these are some of the areas that can be of use to us during this period of the COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Patrice, you are the only one who hasn't spoken, but I am ending. So if you have anything to say, we are almost, it's almost time. But thank you very much. On this note, I want to thank everybody, but maybe just a take home. I don't think I'll be able to summarize everything, but the key things are that Effective partnership is good for managing force displacement, whichever direction we look at it. And it helps to resolve a lot of problems of um, forcibly displaced persons. However, they have challenges and the challenges have been enumerated, um, have been outlined in different formats, funding, resources, among others. But from the recommendations, the things we need to pay attention to, attention to among them include advocacy, training, and also doing more of such platforms which we have just engaged in different conversations. I think from where I sit, I have been able to address the questions that were in the Q&A. If I didn't, then I'm sorry. It means that from where I sit, I didn't either understand or I didn't get it, but I think I have done that. And so I'll use this opportunity to say a big thank you to our dear speakers for the rich information and also for accepting me as a moderator and obeying all the rules I put on the floor. Thank you very much. Zoom has given me power over that. Thank you. And to our cherished audience, thank you all for the, following the event right from the um, afternoon till now. Thank you for your contributions. We are so, so um, happy about them. And keep on following us on the platform. Please, we'll make the link of the, um, the, link of the various conferences in the morning and the afternoon 
sorry, the the more the afternoon and the late afternoon one which we are having now, we'll make them available on the um, on the website. And again, please be informed that the reports will be published in April for everybody to have access to it. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you the next time we organize this. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>